I'm striving for simple forms, but uh, the stone doesn't always want simple forms. It throws things in your way that you have to deal with. And uh, by dealing with it, new shapes happen. This is Mexican alabaster. The hard part is it ha usually has a lot of mud veins. And you have to get rid of the mud veins. That means you dig. <laughs> Here is a mud vein. Here are mud veins and fissures. That means imperfections in the stone that block the light from going through. I love working outdoors. My summers are in the backyard, in the gardening, with the dog and with my sculptures. Every stone is a new experience because no stone, matter of fact, no piece of wood that I pick up is the same. Because I don't pick up anything that is valuable because I can be inventive without being precious about it. There are always surprises. But look, the color is coming out. And the light is entering. Look how radiant, how, how it contains light and color. All I'm doing with the grinder is cutting, cro cutting and cross-cutting series of uh, cuts that I can hammer out in order to go very deep. It goes from gray-white to red and it has specks like uh, somebody put confetti or rice and spilled it there. Nobody has seen the interior of the stone that I'm working on for ever. It is all new and it is a discovery, discovery of colors and veins and life cycles. What made these different colors in the stones? What was growing around it when they formed? You don't see anything when you pick up the stone. It's just gray mess. But when I discovered this vein of darkness, red, brown, the whole thing became alive. And I really focused on making that the center. The more you polished it, the more you saw the veins in it. And the veins, like, like a human body or any body, they lie, it's life. Life-giving lines that sustain it. I like the beat, the rhythm, because it frees the mind to think of other things. It's this total participation body and mind, you think about more spiritual things as you are doing it, and it's enlightening. How many cracks are in the wood? How deep do they go? Uh, how many bug trails do I have? Where does the color change, and how can I use that in the piece? Who educated me the most is probably Julian. I was his student in Cincinnati in painting. He was very smart and very sensitive. No easy results, no easy solutions. I call this thing opposites because every line I make here, the square with the circle, straight line, bent line, everything is shifting and opposes one another. I often leave the rough uh, surface the way I picked up the stone. And I like feeling them, and I want people to feel them. And I hope I can find within the wood and stone something new, novel, daring, that gives credit to the material, but also credit to my thinking and feeling. If others can see something in it, that is my greatest reward.